What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, El Brojo del Bloque, and I'm back with another book review. I have been holding this one off because... I don't know how I end up finding books that... <laughs> I just don't think should be out there. I am a firm believer that certain information does not need to be made public. And this book just so happens to be one of those very informative, very descriptive books that I don't think should fall into every hand. I've been months contemplating whether I even wanted to review this book. After thinking about it, I do think that it is an exciting book for people who are traditionalists. So let's get into Daniel Shulk's Poison Path. <laughs> Big disclaimer, I don't recommend this book to fall in the hands of minors. And after reading it completely through, I don't recommend this book to fall in the hands of anybody who's in their 20s unless they are just inquisitive, just interested in the occult, and they just want a great read, which if that's the case, go right ahead. If you are on a journey of self-exploration and exploring things, please, oh god, just please, uh, don't don't apply everything that the book is teaching. So firstly, I just want to say that I, for so long, have honored and loved Daniel Shulk's work. One of the main reasons why I value his work in the occult world and the library of occult books is because he actually keeps everything traditional. Something that you will find in a lot of new age and self-help books, the new category for spirituality, in a lot of bookstores these days, you will see that a lot of their information is extremely redundant. When it comes to to witchcraft books, probably 80 to 90% of the entire book is about learning the history, chakras, or other systems of spiritualities that actually belong to entire religions that don't help the book understand the traditional form when it comes to the topic of witchcraft. I know that that's a pretty vague explanation, but those that have been to Barnes and Nobles and other famous bookstores and have been in the section for witchcraft, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Personally, I value authors who speak on witchcraft but keep it extremely traditional to the ethnic witchcraft they're talking about, or keep entire systems that have nothing to do with the practice away from the conversation explored in the pages of the book. Because a lot of times the information therein in a lot of these books seems more to be coming from the way the practitioner practices the craft rather than the way that the craft should be explored as someone who has no idea about all the other systems discussed in the pages. Let me digress. This book is definitely for anybody who who is trying to explore different darker side of witchcraft. If you're very interested in old world witchcraft, but that it's extremely dark, traditional witchcraft, I'm gonna recommend almost all of his works. A lot of his works are actually from the practice of European witchcraft. Yet Daniel Shulk has a very brilliant way on writing books on witchcraft that really makes you feel as though it's not even about European witchcraft, it's actually about witchcraft, period. And one of the ways in which he does this is he writes in a very poetic, also very philosophical way. Yet in a lot of instances, he makes references to practices that already exist in order to back up and help the reader understand the information within the pages. Just to jump into why I don't recommend this for anybody in their 20s who is just trying to explore and, you know, do things, or even for minors, because the book actually explores drugs in relationship to witchcraft. It also explores the use of human bodily parts, both decomposed and living, to describe some of the factors in which these things were used for witchcraft in the past. He goes into a lot of chemical compounds when it comes to plant magic and how nature has always been used to help witches ascend to new heights as well as utilize human matter and other forms of materia in order for witches to attain their goals. I'm not going to get too deep into it because as you guys can tell already this is content within the book can get very extremely graphic. The book is dedicated to witchcraft and the poison path. Personally I think that the author did an amazing job literally keeping it within the bounds of just that and never not once straying away from the multiple factors that go into the poison path. Given how much the author knows on this path 
It definitely showed me that he also knows a lot more than he's giving off within the pages. And it also has visuals for you if you like to see kind of like the world of the poison path that he's describing. Full spoiler, it's not like graphic photos or anything like that. Shulk does not shy away from workings of both demon and angelic work when it comes to working with the green path or the poison path. And for those of you who are practitioners of voodoo, you will recognize even within these pages has everything to do with in the practice of working with Gramwa de Lua, as well as when others are bokors and they work with jabs, yedes, or petuos. I will say that this book, Beneficium, is, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Beneficium or Beneficium, girl, something, it's between the two. Or maybe it's like Beneficium, girl, chow, you get it. I'm gonna rate this book 8 out of 10. One of the main reasons why I'm going with that rating is because it's not very reader friendly. The author has a great use of very strong language in the sense that he uses words that are actually a little bit bigger that really won't be found in a lot of books. He also writes, again, like I mentioned earlier, in a very poetic way that can be a little bit difficult for people learning about witchcraft to really understand what it is he's trying to say because it can be interpreted in many ways sometimes with the way that he writes. That's not for all of the chapters or all of the information given within the book but a lot of it will consist in that kind of writing. There were even moments where he caught me off guard with the book and I had to like pause and research what a word would mean related back to the sentence that I was reading in order to digest the information properly. And even though I am an avid reader, it's something that I keep into account when making reviews because it should be user-friendly. But then again, as an occult book that is not meant for children, I can see why he writes in this way. And that's just an assumption because he does make a big, big, big mention of the poison path being a path that is synonymous with self-healing. And self-poisoning describes someone who is using the green or the plant world or the plant kingdom in order to both cure, but it can also be used to harm. And walking down the poison path can also mean anything from as simple as drinking chamomile tea to drinking an entire concoction or potion in order to create some feeling of delirium or some feeling of entering into another dimension. And that's when the conversation of drugs in relationship to witchcraft is applied. Now, one of the main reasons why I don't recommend this for anyone in their 20s is because I know that this is usually the age and even for some teens the age when a lot of people are experimenting with things like acid or other heavier drugs yet the abuse of a lot of these drugs can really be extremely harmful and even detrimental to the soul of the person which i think goes without say the author has no problem describing and telling you guys what will happen if you guys try this on your own i do think that he only is writing about these things to help educate and how if we take our time to study and respect nature we can actually work with nature in order to ascend ourselves into a new form that reflects both who we are meant to be as well as the people that can actually shape our own world i do realize the information given within the pages can be really misinterpreted by some people who probably have nefarious ideas or a nefarious mind to use the information they're in to actually do more harm than good because like the author mentions poison path does not shy away from nefarious acts satanic acts as well as good deeds and good acts and angelic acts or miracles and that is because plants have the ability to both have demons and angels but again i don't recommend it for everybody and because of that i have considered heavily whether i do this review or not but I'm doing this for you guys because I love the occult. I know you guys really need book reviews like this to help expose you guys to really good books as well as great mentions. See you at the next review.